I want to develop these machines that will help me to be creative and will challenge my own way of doing things. The more intelligence I can model in these machines, the more these machines will push me to the other direction. What are the kinds of things that I can do that I would do different with a quantum computer? The main difference between a quantum computer and a classical computer is the unity of information and processing of a quantum computer operates at the subatomic level. The qubit, which is the equivalent of the bit in the classical computer, can have values or states, if you like, that are between zero and one, and also zero and one at the same time. But there are grades, so it can be more zero or more one, depending on how you, you program it. It promotes a different way of thinking when you program these computers. And uh, I believe that this different way of thinking um, also will lead to different ways of thinking about music. And this is what we are um, you know, giving a glimpse of what is to come in, the, in these performances. Tonight's event is uh, kind of special because in a sense it's not as much about what can art do for quantum computing, it's rather how can quantum computing help us discover whole new landscape uh, in classical music. How can art and culture help us understand emerging technologies and maybe how can art and culture sort of trouble the way we think and talk about emerging technologies such as quantum computing? The particular computer that I'm using for the performance tonight is provided by IBM Quantum and those machines are based in, in New York. When Craig plays the violin, the computer is listening. We represent that as quantum states. The machine evaluates those states and gives responses back which is converted back to music. And all this happens in real time. And this is fundamentally different from the methods that artificial intelligence does this in, in classical machines. It's producing quite interesting results because the computer is figuring out uh, the motifs and trying to repeat something very similar. It's not something that I, I feel I can label at the moment. Is it? it doesn't fit into any particular box. I don't think it'll ever replace, uh, you know, traditional classical music, but it certainly has a place uh, in, in, in musical development. You know, how do we grow, how do we develop if we don't explore other, other avenues? The second demonstration is actually a performance where we are uh, playing a new musical instrument that we are developing. So this is a quantum musical instrument. What you see on the computer interface is a sphere. This sphere represents the qubit. So as you rotate the sphere, it is showing the various states that this sphere can, can, can assume. All points in this sphere can be a piece of information. We networked three instruments and each of us control a qubit as if we were rotating the qubit with our hand. What is interesting here for us 
is that this, the sound that results from these measurements will always be surprising. And this is the beauty of quantum mechanics, because if you have a quantum state, you do not know exactly what it is until you measure it. We have combinations of sounds, but we do not know what will be the resulting sound after the measurement until we do the measurement. So the performance is a sequence of rotating, creating states, measuring, listening to the measurements, and starting it all over again. But the interesting thing about uh, talking about quantum computing right now and talking about this intersection of culture and art and quantum computing is I guess that we're at the stage of development of technology where we as society can still impact the way it's gonna go forward. And as Goethe Institute we do believe that art can play a very important role in this conversation. I imagine a situation in the future, for example, where a composer composes a piece of music and represents the score, so to speak, as quantum states, as a quantum circuit for, for a machine. It's the same piece, it sounds more or less the same, but every time you listen to it, you'll be different. I, I see this relationship as a collaboration, so I, I like to collaborate with machines to compose, the same way that I sometimes collaborate with people to, to, to compose. And you know, th this can be a, a network, can be people, machines, musicians, uh, robots, and, and you name it. fascinated to know how it works so I have to I have to find out about that it's difficult for me to make a judgment because you don't know how many of those decisions were being made by humans in which case it's music as we know it and you can make judgments about that but I don't know what percentage of what we heard was coming out of that system and out of that different kind of intelligence and of course I'm very interested in different kinds of intelligence so I want to know the answer to that my view is that Eduardo is a pioneer, but pioneers, by their very definition, open up avenues and vistas. And there are artists who have yet to encounter quantum technologies, and what they will do with the technology is very different from what the pioneer might do. I think that over the course of the next three years, we will get to the point where we have a sufficient constituency of people looking at this from a creative standpoint to start to see the differentiation. This first two or three years is experimental. <laughs>